Hello everybody, uh, my name is Angelica Raquel Martinez and I'm one of the artists that has work in this amazing group exhibition at the MAC um, in the exhibition called uh, Textile Poetics or Poetica Textil and my work are four pieces and they're all textiles that are made both by hand and through a machine called the Gun Tufter. Um, so I'm going to be introducing you all to a little bit of what my work is about and the processes that I go through in order to make these pieces. So like I said before, they're type of it's a type of tufting that is the process that I use to make my pieces. Um, the process originally is intended for those pieces to be made into rugs. Um, it was developed a long time ago in order for people who could not afford rugs to make their own rugs out of found material so that they can keep their families warm. And it was definitely uh, created by women. So I take a lot of pride in continuing on that tradition by being a woman making these pieces. Um, so one of the tools that I use to make my pieces is this little rug hook handle. And there's different types. This one is a beginner's one. Um, but they sell more expensive ones that once you really get into the, I guess, the groove of making, you might want to switch to, but I've never found any problems with this. And so you let this round part of the bottom rest into your hand, and then you use this very dull hook to grasp the fabric. And that could be yarn or strips of material through a loosely woven um, backing that uh, could be anything from burlap to monk's cloth. So here is a little piece of monk's cloths and so this is what I use in my work. So let's take a look. It's very loose. There's different grades of monk's cloth. Um, the one that I purchase is has a very loose weaving and so you can kind of see more or less how loose that is. And what happens is you can puncture through and grab yarn or material through. Um, and that's, you weave one single strip of material, so it could be yarn or it could be a strip of fabric from like old t-shirts or clothing, which was the ideal materials when it was first invented. Um, old clothing, hand-me-downs that didn't fit children or adults, and burlap sacks that had grain or rice, um, anything, any so sort of storage where that burlap sack wasn't needed anymore, that would be turned into rugs and used to keep the homes warm. Um, generally, rug hooking was not considered a form of art. It was considered like a country um, craft, so it wasn't really looked upon highly. But recently, uh, contemporary artists are starting to really pick up this craft again. And I myself am completely infatuated with the material, the process, and the idea of weave weaving these like heavy duty um, tapestries that instead of living on the floor, live on the wall. Um, so there are different, some of the different pieces that I have in the show are done by hand using this uh, rug hooking uh, handle. Um, but some of the other pieces include a gun tufter. And that gun tufter works in a similar way, but you have to work from behind the fabric. And with this handle, you work from the top. Um, and you work simultaneously through the bottom. So for my larger pieces, I have a large rug, rug frame that I uh, pull the material around tightly. Um, but for smaller pieces, you could easily just use one of these hoops. So this is one of my pieces that I have in progress. Um, and it has, uh, there's a whole story behind this new series that I'm doing, but there's a little uh, jackrabbit with a star. And so what I would do is 
this fabric is nice and tight so I don't have to worry too much about um, fumbling around with the monk's cloth. And I just push this handle through and grab the yarn. Um, so with my other hand underneath and then I grab the yarn. And so you can see that little tiny piece that just went through right there. And then just continue doing that with the rest of that strand of yarn. So that's the basic process of rug hooking. I tend to learn uh, new techniques just through um, research and videos and how to's and tutorials, um, and then just put my own spin on it. So a range from the smaller pieces like what you just saw to um, larger pieces like that are in the exhibition. And I have actually a newer piece that I've been working on. So it's quite large, so you're, you won't be able to see the full image, but this is the backing and this is the piece. So it's exciting. I really like this process. Um, it's tedious and meditative, which is more or less how I like to work. Um, a lot of my pieces as of now have been more tied to my past, my culture, and familial stories that I grew up with. So I'm going to show you the pieces that are in the exhibition. This one is La Bruja Scourge and the Beggar's Affliction. This is my first piece that I made um, using this technique ever. And I didn't intend this to really be an artwork that I was going to show, but I found that I really loved um, the result and the process made it so much more, I guess, um, the process of weaving and, and doing it all by hand, which is when I did it all by hand, it took approximately three months, almost daily working on it because it's so large. And the process really felt like I put a lot of work into it, which was important because this imagery is based on stories that I heard that are really close to my family. Um, and all my pieces have to do with these types of stories and culture that I'm exploring and, and coming to grips with um, mortality and losing a family member that really tied my family together. So these are all, in a sense, honoring that memory. So this piece is based on a legend that is very specific and found nowhere else but in Laredo, Texas, which is where I'm from. Um, and this one is about a man who was cursed to be a dog by a bruja who tricked him. And his love and questions with violence and what she commanded him to do. And so um, he is battling that the morals and what is just and what is right over his love of the witch. Um, and the result was him being cursed and he could only speak to dogs afterwards. So you can see the rest of the hounds howling in sadness, hearing his stories. So this is another piece that's in the exhibition. And this one, the imagery is meant to be really vague and really symbolic. Um, some of the stories I won't be sharing with you completely, but are very, very personal and more about um, family members. So I like to keep things very vague and allow symbolism to really tell the story and to ignite inspiration into the viewer to see what they interpret. Um, but it's about the, the spirit and the idea of the afterlife and reincarnation and being visited by those who you've had really strong relationships with in a past life. Um, so questions about that and the questions of how important relationships are even after death, um, the soul and spirituality. So you can see that this is my first piece that I started including non-fiber materials. Um, so you can see these little bells and these little skulls that dangle at the very end of these strands and the, each of the bell represents a kiss and the succession of three kisses that were startling to 
a man who woke up and saw a woman floating above him and she kissed him three times and he was very confused by this spirit that was floating made of electricity she's the blue woman and so she's been really uh repeating in my work or that image um and so the house is a ghost image of what's happening inside which is the bed and the woman floating above and um if you see the work in person you would see that she's made up of these really lovely poly fibers that are iridescent and glittery so she looks like she is um electric or has an aura about her which is really lovely um so with this piece, I started exploring more symbols in my work that were maybe not found before, like the human figure, and how that's becoming more important to include the human figure since all these stories are based around myself and my family and experiences in general. So the human figure, I thought, was a little more important that I need to start including it. Um, cause, because before I would just include things like the droplet or the hand, the human hand, to represent the human element. So, Sin Mi Cuerpo Con Mi Alma is a piece that I took on right around the time that my grandfather died. And it this represents the soul leaving the body and the magic and beauty that comes from that along with the ache and heartache. So with this piece, I made two other pieces simultaneously, one a painting and one a very large sculpture. Um, and all come from different um, gut feeling that happened during the funeral, during the news, and trying to grapple with mortality in general. Um, so this piece was simultaneously made with the sculpture that represented the body and this was the imagery of the soul leaving that body and even though it is without its body on this earth and being physically present which is all that we can really interact with or have a relationship with or so it seems the soul is very important and so that soul is still um where that personality and where the where the not meat but the electricity of what that means to be from like the mind and the heart um so this is more like that visual representation of that experience or my what i imagine that experience to be like so the wound and and the water and the waves and the unknown is represented through that water This one, this piece in particular is the newest and it, I made this at the start of quarantine, right when I was graduating, right when I was about to have my thesis show um, and having to go into lockdown, and learning to work from home. Everything was for everybody on this world, in this world was changing. Um, so it was a lot to grapple with and through not being around my family or my lifelines, it was really difficult. Um, so this piece also includes uh, parts of it that are not made just strictly through fibers. Um, these are actually a polymer clay and Swarovski crystal and nail art um, pieces that are embedded into these polymer clay items. Um, and this is also the first piece I've made that included a branch or any any type of wood, um, which this branch in particular came during a very harsh storm that tore my trees apart in my backyard during quarantine. And so the next day I went outside and just grabbed some branches and this one fit perfectly. So this was this a lot of um, material that was really close to me. Um, and so you can see the human animal really reaching out towards the spirit, towards comfort and the unknown, um, which is what feeling, which, which is what we're probably all feeling like in this quarantine. Um, so I guess a lot of my work now is going more towards 
this type of textile and material and inclusion of 